Madayao Dava Oriental. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. To our online watchers, mayong hapon kanatong tanan. Welcome to Dava Oriental State College of Science and Technology, a university of excellence, innovation, and inclusion. This is the Institute of Education and Teacher Training Graduate School Virtual Orientation for the year 2020. I am Dr. Helena Jean Perez Dupa. It is my pleasure to be the moderator for this afternoon's program. We are live at the DOSCST Graduate School Facebook page via Zoom. To begin with the program, let us invoke the presence of God with an opening prayer through a multimedia presentation. This will be followed by the singing of national anthem and the provincial and city hymns. <laughs> Guiding love all through my 
Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. our very own Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Roslyn V. Regino. Good afternoon, everyone. I take great pleasure to be given the opportunity to open this program, the Graduate School Orientation. Before anything else, I would like to congratulate all of you students on having secured your graduate education here in the OSCST. You chose not to miss the dear opportunity to get good education despite the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. This semester, we welcome 105 graduate students across our five programs. Approximately 50% of you are freshmen. 
I am not sure how many of the freshies are totally new to the state college, having pursued their undergraduate studies elsewhere. By whatever route you came to be here, I welcome you to the OSCST Graduate School. This will be your new home for the duration of your graduate studies. You are about to start an exciting journey of self-improvement, professional growth, and academic excellence with a new mode of instruction delivery. Just for the information of everyone, from among the first-year students, 57% are enrolled in MAED Educational Management. 23% are enrolled in MSD General Science. 17% in MAED Teaching English. And 2% are into MSD Math. From among the five graduate programs, we have the greatest population enrolled in MAED Edman with 31 students. This is followed by MST General Science with 25 students, then MST Teaching Math with 21, MAED Teaching English with 18, and 10 students under the MPA or the Master in Public Administration program. By the way, MPA is a consortium between the OSCST and the University of Science and Technology of Southern Philippines in Cagayan de Oro. As the COVID-19 pandemic runs its course, the OSCST created precautionary measures that will, that will control the spread of the infection. These measures disrupt the normal functioning of classes but we have to strictly comply with the rules and health protocols set by the government. One of these is to limit the number of students congregating in our campus. This means that for this semester or until further notice, we will not be seeing each other face to face inside the classroom or limited meetups is possible but only when extremely necessary. So as you can see, the new mode of learning will be very different from what it used to be. However, we assure you students that we have put in place alternative methods so we can continue giving you lessons when attending school is not possible. And yet, quality education is ensured. I think many of you are already having classes. Classes, Those students with access to digital service devices and internet connection will have their online education. Those who do not have similar opportunities can opt for modular learning. That's how flexible and blended learning will be conducted. Our health is of paramount importance, which is why we need to overcome this tough time with a positive attitude for one's own sake and for others. Although, it may seem like difficult when you can't go out freely and do whatever you want, every opportunity is open to you and what matters is how you use them. So together, let us stand strong with solidarity as we fight this pandemic. Thank you and always keep safe and healthy. Thank you so much, Dr. Rihino, our very energetic VP for Acad Affairs. At this juncture, Dr. Lilibeth S. Galvez, a graduate school faculty and at the same time, the Director for International Affairs Office, will present an overview of the graduate school. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Graduate School of DOSCST. The establishment of the DOSCST Graduate School was made possible through an approved Board of Trustees Resolution Number 33 Series of 2000. The need to offer graduate programs was in consideration to serve the need of the professionals who aim for graduate education so they don't have to go to the universities and the city. When this started, its operation in 2000, there was only one curricular program offered. 
This was the Master of Science in Teaching or MST, but with two majors, in General Science and in Mathematics. It was in June 2008 when the Master of Education major in Educational Management and major in Teaching English were finally offered after the thorough revision of their curricula. Graduate school in this year was also extended in Katiil campus, but this was only for a short period due to the decreasing number of students. The administration of the graduate school was managed by Dr. Malioni Baoyut from 2000 until 2002. It was during his leadership that he was able to invite graduate students who are on scholarship by the municipal local government units here in Davao Oriental. He was succeeded by Professor Elizabeth Espejo from 2002 until 2007. It was also during her administration that she had the graduate program subjected to accreditation. Then came Dr. Bernadette Nanual, who has served from 2007 until 2010. What could be worth noting in her administration was the laying out of the new policies in the operation of the graduate school and coming up with a graduate school manual. Then from 2010 until 2013, Dr. Marshali Bacchiano took the designation as the head of the graduate school. It was also then that she had produced the book of abstracts of all graduate thesis, introduced the Cafe Clutch, an avenue where graduate students were able to present their research result and had started conducting the graduate school extension program in response to the wide findings of accreditation. In 2013, Dr. Saturnino Dalagan, until 2018, he continued the programs of Dr. Bacchiano, and it was also during this time that the institutes of the college proposed the offerings of three doctorate programs, which were already approved by the Board of Trustees. In its aim to expand the offering of more curricular programs, Dr. Dalagan ventured into the consortium with the University of Science and Technology in the Philippines in Cagayan de Oro City, offering Master in Public Administration in 2013. But as of this time, we are only catering to the students completing their degree and have no longer accepted new enrollees. This is in our quest to offer new graduate programs with the OSCST as the degree granting institution. Short stint administrations were done by Dr. Rosalind Fijino from September 2018 until March 2019. With barely seven months in the office, her administration paved the way for the establishment of the graduate school building and its facilities. From April 2019 until July 2019, it was Ms. Errol Aquino. And from August last year up to the present, the graduate school is now headed by Dr. Janet Tayone, who had contributed for the Level 3 Phase 1 accreditation of all existing curricular graduate programs. In closing, I would say, Congratulations for choosing the OSCST to be your provider for professional growth. Although we oftentimes hear from a lot of professionals and even fresh graduates who are hesitant to enroll here in the OSCST, as it is always construed to be difficult. At any rate, your stay with us will certainly defy this notion. Again, we are grateful for your choice of enrolling here with us. Good afternoon once again. Thank you, po, Dr. Galvez, for showing us a quick picture of the graduate school. Next is the dissemination of the college vision, mission, goals, and objectives, or the VMGO, and the different graduate school programs, such as Master of Science Teaching Mathematics, Master of Science Teaching General Science, Master of Arts in Education, major in Teaching English, and Master of Arts in Education, major in Educational Management. To do this part, please welcome the Dean of the Institute of Education and Teacher Training, Dr. Saturnino E. Delagan, Jr. Good day to everybody. Each school is guided by its vision mission and goals 
and its curricula should also revolve around this. This is the DOSCST's vision, showing a clear concept of what the institution would like to become in the future. It provides the focal point or unifying element according to which the school staff, faculty, students perform individually or collectively. A school's vision can be very ambitious, but that is a characteristic of a vision. So, everybody say it with me. DOSCST Vision, a University of Excellence, Innovation, and Inclusion. These are the DOSCST mission statements that spell out how it intends to carry out its vision. The mission targets to produce the kind of persons and the kind of students will become after having been educated over a certain period of time. Everybody say it with me. DOSCST mission. One, to elevate knowledge generation, utilization, and distribution. Two, to promote inclusive, sustainable development through research and development-based higher quality education, technical vocational skills responsive to the needs of local and global community. And three, to produce holistic, creative, and inclusive human resource who are responsive and resilient to global challenges while maintaining a strong sense of nationhood. The school's vision and mission are further translated into goals, which are broad statements or intents to be accomplished. Data for the sources of school goals may include the learners, the society, and the fund of knowledge. So, everybody say it with me. Goal of DOSCST Graduate School It is the goal of the graduate school to produce highly competent, globally competitive, values-oriented, gender and culture-sensitive graduates who are holistically developed educators, and workers for the community, equipped with enhanced knowledge and skills in instruction, research, extension, and production. These goals are made simple and specific for the attainment of each learner. These are called educational objectives. In other words, objectives direct the change in behavior which is the ultimate aim of learning. They provide the basis for the selection of learning content and learning experiences. They also set the criteria against which learning outcomes will be evaluated. So everybody say it with me. Program Objectives Master of Arts in Education Educational Management and Teaching English. The MAID program aims to enhance and upgrade the skills and competence of policymakers, education leaders, school administrators, and even classroom teachers to help promote and ensure quality education in the locality and in the country. Students shall be prepared to become better public and private planners, managers, administrators, teachers, and or advocates of social change, administrative reforms, and national development. Program objectives for Master of Science teaching, major in general science, and major in mathematics. One, to upgrade teachers in the areas of content and methodology. Two, 
to equip teachers with advanced and specialized knowledge through process and research-based education. Three, to prepare teachers as competent consumers, traders, and possibly producers of research and education. Four, to develop educational leadership qualities of teachers in response to rapid changes in technology. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Sir Saturn. This time, Dr. Willan Franco C. Tayone, a graduate school faculty, will introduce the pool of faculty members affiliated in the graduate school. Good afternoon. The graduate school faculty boasts a team of highly professional, scholastic, and brilliant teaching staff. With their diverse and deep educational attainments, rich teaching experience, and a sense of professional dedication, our professors fit perfectly with the learning environments promised by the colleagues. First in the list is Mr. Arniel A. Alberete, a Master of Science in Applied Mathematics, and his handling statistics applied to education. Also is Professor Jocelyn C. Arles, a Doctor of Philosophy major in Mathematics Education candidate, and she's handling statistics applied to education. Next is Professor Maryfield M. Baoyot, a Doctor of Philosophy in Clinical Psychology candidate, and she's handling advanced educational psychology. We also have Professor Jonathan S. Cabrera. He is currently doing his Doctor of Information Technology and he's currently handling information technology subject. Also is Dr. Maria Cecilia Katubig, a Doctor of Philosophy in Economics and she's handling methods of research and thesis subjects. Next is Dr. Ros Anilin V. Siniza, a doctor of philosophy in clinical psychology, and she's handling advanced educational psychology subjects. Next is Professor Donel C. Sereno, a doctor in sustainable development studies candidate and his handling modern geometry subject. Also is Dr. Saturnino E. Dalagan Jr., a doctor of education major in educational management. He's handling philosophical and psychological foundations of education. We also have Mr. Ruel S. Domo, a Master of Arts in Teaching Mathematics, and he's handling probability and statistics and modern geometry subjects. We also have Dr. Helena Jean Dupa, a Doctor of Philosophy in Sociology, and she's handling information technology subjects. We also have Professor Marites S. Erespe, a Doctor of Philosophy major in Horticulture candidate. And she is teaching biology for uh, teachers. Next is Dr. Lilibeth S. Galvez, a Doctor of Philosophy in Applied Linguistics. And she's handling academic reading and writing. Next is Dr. Jose Lito T. Gaita Jr., a Doctor of Education major in Educational Management. Dr. Gaita is teaching curriculum and IM development. Next faculty is Professor Rinaldo M. Guillena, a Master of Arts in Teaching Mathematics. Dr. Guillena or Professor Guillena is handling modern geometry subject. 
We also have Dr. Carmela N. Hadia, a doctor of philosophy major in development administration. She's handling public administration subjects. Next is Professor Eliseo F. Cuesca, a doctor of philosophy major in Asian studies, and is a candidate for this, and he's handling methods of research subject. We also have Professor Danilo O. Hakube, a doctor of philosophy major in mathematics candidate, and uh, he's handling logic and set theory. We also have Dr. Jihan A. Labrador. He is a doctor of philosophy in educational management and Dr. Labrador is teaching information technology subjects. We also have Dr. Maria Gloria R. Lugo, a doctor of philosophy in educational management and Dr. Logo is handling psychological and philosophical foundation of uh, education. Next is Dr. Bernadette J. Nanual, a doctor of philosophy major in biology, and she's handling methods of research subjects. Next is Dr. Asterio G. Ulandria, a doctor of philosophy in development research and administration. He's handling public administration uh, subjects. Next is Ms. Lizelle C. Padua, a master in public administration. And Ms. Padua is handling statistics applied to education. We also have Dr. Nelson P. Pastulero, a doctor of philosophy in applied linguistics. Uh, he's handling academic writing and uh, reading. Next is uh, Dr. Roy G. Ponce, a doctor of education, evaluation, capacity building. Dr. Ponce is handling advanced statistics. Next is Engineer Franz Gillian B. Rapis, Master of Science in Environment and Natural Resource Management. Engineer Rapis is handling environmental science for teachers and environmental management subjects. We also have Dr. Romeo J. Ridulia, a Doctor of Education major in Educational Management. Dr. Ridulia is handling curriculum and IM development. Next is Dr. Roslyn V. Rihino, a doctor of philosophy major in environmental science and management. She's handling thesis writing and chemistry for teachers subjects. Next is Professor Ivan L. Saligumba, a candidate of Doctor of Philosophy in Science Education, major in Physics Education. He's handling physics for teacher subjects. Next is Mr. Rejan A. Salimako, a Master of Information Technology, and also handling the same subject. Next is Dr. John Glenn P. Signel, a Doctor in Sustainable Development Studies and he is handling environmental management subjects. Next is Dr. Leo Rizel D. Sciarot, a doctor of philosophy major in applied linguistics, and Dr. Sciarot is handling advanced philosophy in education subjects. Next is Mr. Saturnino D. Sibaluka, a master in public management, and handling psychological and philosophical foundation of education. We also have Dr. Joy M. Sorosa, a doctor of philosophy in biological science. And Dr. Sorosa is handling methods of research in biology for teachers subjects. Next is Dr. Ibito B. Sumile, a doctor of philosophy in horticulture and Dr. Sumili is handling educational leadership and management subjects. 
Next is Dr. Janet C. Tayone, a doctor of philosophy in science education in chemistry. She's handling thesis writing subjects. Next is yours truly, a doctor of philosophy in bioprocess engineering, major in natural products and chemistry. And I am handling chemistry for teachers and methods of research subjects. Next is Dr. Nicanor M. Tuan, a doctor of philosophy in mathematics sciences, major in applied mathematics. Dr. Tuan is handling modern algebra subjects. Followed by Dr. Gemma M. Valdez, a doctor of philosophy in science education, major in mathematics. Dr. Valdez is handling thesis uh, subjects. Next is Mr. Rickster Lee C. Versosa, a Master of Science teaching major in general science, and he's handling earth science subjects. Next is Professor Eleanor M. Vilela, a Doctor in Sustainable Development Studies candidate, and she's handling environmental management subjects. Last but not the least is Mr. Cirilo O. Ibanez Jr., a Master of Science in Biology. And Mr. Ibanez is currently handling biology for teachers' subjects. Now, those are your 41 strong faculty of the graduate school. And on behalf of the faculty force, I would like to welcome you all as we strive to continuously develop and enhance academic excellence. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Tayone, for a very kind presentation of the teaching force. We will proceed to the presentation of the services offered for the graduate school students in terms of library and registrar's office. To explain the library services, Please welcome Mr. Gary Dave S. Sol Soloy, a registered librarian.
to present the services under the registrar's office, may I call in our college registrar, Ms. Grace D. Antipolo. Good afternoon. I welcome you all to Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology and to this graduate school virtual orientation for academic year 2020-2021. I am Grace D. Antipolo, representing from the Office of the Registrar. I will be discussing to you about some concerns of the office. First is the advanced credit or the filing of validation of subjects. This will be applied to transfer students who have taken units from other universities and colleges. This will be done within the semester when the student is officially enrolled. Advanced credit forms are available at the registrar's office, window 10. Requirements Students must be officially enrolled and have the official transcript of records and the honorable dismissal from the previous school. Second is the substitution of subjects. This is the filing of the substitution or the crediting of subjects taken in this college. This will be applied to students whose curriculum been superseded by new one. This will be done within the semester when the student is officially enrolled. Substitution forms are available at the registrar's office, window 10. Requirements. Students must be officially enrolled and subjects to be substituted must be in a passing rate. Third is the change matriculation period or the filing of adding, dropping of subjects. This is applied to students who wants to drop or add subjects. And the filing and the deadline date of submission will be on August 29, 2020. Submission of the said forms will be at the graduate school office. Forms are available at the office of the registrar. Requirements. Student must be officially enrolled. We have another concern, the leave of absence. Students must file leave of absence when he decides to stop from enrolling for one or two semesters. This is also applied to students who are decided to drop for the current semester. Last day of filing is on October 30, 2020, before the midterm examination period. Forms are available at the office of the registrar, window 10. Last is the requesting of credentials. These are the documents or credentials of the students. Who could avail on this are the currently enrolled students, graduates, and even the dropout students. When to avail is that the student must accomplish the request clearance and submit at the office of the registrar. Scheduled date for the release of the request credential will be in two to three days upon the submission of the clearance. Clearance will be also submitted to the records in charge at the office of the registrar. 
while the clearance form are also available at the office. You can also access your academic records through our website, isip.dorsu-rde.com. You are prompt by username, which is your ID number, and a password, which is your birth date. You may also request through our virtual person on our Facebook page account at DOCST Registrar. Thank you very much, and once again, good afternoon. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought us to the new normal that ushers both the teachers and the students to the virtual class setting. Now, to help us understand the learning management system of the college in this new normal, may I call in Professor Jonathan S. Cabrera, a graduate school faculty and at the same time, head of the Information Technology Services Unit. Good day everyone. So today I will present to you our learning management system. This is only a brief orientation about our LMS. To start with, we will define first what is LMS. LMS is short for Learning Management System. It is a web application for learning programs and training contents. Currently, our new LMS has two new features that is a mobile application and desktop application. So you can use your mobile phone and you can use your laptop in the mob or in desktop application. And it has a features like online and offline. So offline means you can access our LMS without the use of internet. Next, uh, this LMS includes the following. Uh, it has a capability to administer teacher and students. So this LMS can assign teacher to a certain subject and student can enroll the subject using enrollment key or the teacher can enroll the student manually. Uh, it also includes learning programs and training contents. Most of the businesses use this learning management system for their training. In our case, we use this learning management system as an alternative way to teach you in our subject because, subjects because of this pandemic. Uh, it includes also courses and subjects and online events. All of our subjects in our school can be uh, imported in this learning management system and this learning management system also can host an event uh, it also includes internal communication communication system it means you can interact with your uh, teacher or you can interact with your classmates uh, this system also includes documentation so it means uh, everything that you've done inside of this learning management system is recorded. You can track, or this system can track the progress of your subjects. No, you can. This system also will provide a report for a for e-learning subjects. Like example, if the teacher wanted to to check the reports of the grades, then the teacher can do that. It has also a, a, capacity, a capability to interact uh, student and teacher by a forum. So you can discuss things inside of the forums. Uh, it also supports portability and standards. Like example, uh, if our learning management system will not work, all of the data can be exported to other learning management systems like Canvas, like Blackboard, and so on. Uh, this learning management system also display the grades and transcript of a cert transcript in a certain subjects. It also provides security systems to our information inside of this learning management system. 
Next is, what is this system is all about? This is all about, uh, LMS is used to manage online contents and, and administer distance learning processes. Because of this pandemic, we will use the, this learning management system as an alternative way to, to interact you with our subjects. No? We can post our, the contents of our subjects. We can give you quiz via learning management system and so on. LMS also allows us to create and support unlimited number of online learning. So it means uh, all of our subjects will be posted in our LMS. All of the students can also interact with our LMS. Courses and subjects can be accessed by students from all over the world. So it means you can access this learning management system sa inyong balay. You can also access this one via offline if you don't have internet at your... Uh, you can access the online quizzes. You can access course uh, documents repository. Like example, your teacher uploaded a certain file. Then you can access that file. Uh, it also includes mailbox, so all of your communication can be put in the mailbox of our LMS. Meron siyang forum and chat, so you can have a discussion by a forum. You can have also the chat, no? you can access the chat. It has a features also that will change uh, language, like example from English to other national language. Now, let's go to the user rules and interfaces. As you can see in this picture, this is the chart of the LMS. So, at the upper part, we have this administrator. We have this administrator that will give us the policy about our learning management system. And on the lower part, we have this uh, local administrator that will administer our our, our learning management system we have this teacher that will manage our subject and students as you as the learner so now let's go to access our learning management system you need to put this lms.dosst.com url in our browser you can use Chrome, Mozilla, and any other uh, browser, internet browser. Okay, once you put this lms.dosst.com, you will be redirected in this homepage of our LMS. Meron siyang username, meron siyang password, meron siyang login button. But please do not write anything on this part. Because our learning management system is utilizing our DOS is the mailing system. But this mailing system is powered by Google. As you can see here, you need to click this Google logo to log in our LMS. But before that, make sure to log out all Gmail accounts prior to log in to avoid possible problems. Okay, so you need to open another tab and then check if there is currently login Gmail and kindly log out that one. And then go back to this LMS and click this Google logo. Once you click that one, you will be redirected with this small page that will ask you to enter your uh, DOSST email. So in this page, all of your uh, active Gmail account will be posted here. If the DOSST email is not here, kindly click this use another account. And then it will ask to enter your email or phone. In this case, we will put our DOSST email. Our uh, The format of our DOSST email is your student ID number at uh, 
at bosst.edu.ph. Example, if your student ID number is 2000-0001, so therefore, your email address is 2000-0001 at bosst.edu.ph. Put that one in this email box and then press next. Okay, on the next slide, you will be, the, the system will ask your password. So, your password is your student ID number. If your ID number is 2020-001, so this is your student uh, password or your LMS password. Note, you will be asked to change your password. No? On, on, on your first login, you will be asked to change your password. So, make sure to remember your password. Okay, once you log in, you will be redirected in this home page. So this is the home page of this account. This is only a demo account. So currently, this demo account has no uh, subject enrolled. But once you enroll to a certain subject, you have this link, my courses, and you have the list of subjects enrolled here. So currently, this account has only one enrolled subject. I will not discuss the, the detailed flow to access the subjects, but you will be provided a link that will guide you on how to access our LMS or how to access your subjects in the LMS. So this is the link. This is the tutorial on how to access the subjects in our LMS. Tiny that kindly put this one into your browser tiny.cc slash d-o-s-s-t l-m-s l-m-s is capital so again tiny.cc slash d-o-s-c-s-t capital l-m-s that's all for my presentation and good day thank you so much professor cabrera and now with pride and honor let me introduce you to the college OIC president, the man behind the facelift of the entire college. Let us be inspired by his message. Please welcome President Emeritus, Dr. Edito B. Somile. To my fellow administrators, graduate school coordinator and support staff, and Juris graduate students, Good afternoon. First of all, I would like to thank you for making Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology a part of your personal growth, professional development, and career goals. This virtual orientation is initiated for the graduate students to know the vision, mission, goals, and objectives of this institution. Overview of the graduate school, getting to know the pool of faculty members, the services offered of the library and the registra, the application of the learning management systems and existing policies governing the graduate program. As a graduate student of this institution, you will be confronted with rewarding challenges. You will soon discover that graduate study is quite different from your undergraduate experiences. They are in any manner differs along the way. Classes tend to be relatively smaller and opportunities to work with faculty members one-on-one -on -one considerably greater. However, due to the current health crisis brought about by COVID-19 pandemic, Students and faculty members are highly encouraged to explore online learning and or blended learning approach. You have to realize also that graduate programs are usually demand greater individual initiative as compared to undergraduate courses of study. And you will be responsible for your own progress toward the degree. If you will just try hard there could be no hindrance to meet success. Your intellectual life shall revolve around the curriculum and the faculty of the program that you have selected. 
you shall have you shall have a faculty mentor who will serve as an advisor and help you guide through your program of study good mentoring is critical to your success and the graduate school is making every effort to ensure that the highest quality level of guidance is accorded to you along the way you will find yourself breaking new intellectual ground and contributing to the academic conversations in your chosen field field to ensure that the environment is very much conducive and comfortable during your stay as a student, this institution has provided you with a well-ventilated and air-conditioned classroom with installed smart TVs for virtual classes. We have student lounge, spacious library, and own audiovisual room. The provision of these standard facilities is among the paramount consideration of the administration as these are factors in upholding quality graduate education. Never stop pursuing your goals in life, no matter how bumpy the roads you are stepping into. At the end of the day, you are the, on, you are the one who can gain the rewards behind all sac sacrifices and trials. Success usually comes to those who are too busy looking for it. Once again, good afternoon. Stay safe from COVID-19. Daghan kayong salamat, Sir Sumili, for that very encouraging um, message. At this juncture, we shall have the presentation of the policies of the Graduate School by our very own Graduate School Coordinator, Dr. Janeth C. Tayone. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Graduate School Orientation. I am tasked to give you the policies of the Graduate School. This include the delivery of program, fees, admission, coursework plan, academic load, cross-registration, transfer of credits or advanced credits, grading system, residence requirement, leave of absence, admission to candidacy for graduation, comprehensive examination, and lastly, the master's thesis. This is quite long, so please bear with me. Now let us start with the program delivery of classes. Classes are held every Saturdays during regular semester, Mondays to Fridays for the mid-year or known before as summer classes. That includes, or this would be during June to July. Sundays and evenings are allowed provided it is agreed by students and faculty. A total of 54 hours inclusive of at least 36 actual contact with students. However, during this pandemic period, the USCSD adopted flexible or blended learning modalities. And that includes face-to-face, -face, but only for a maximum of 15 students at a given time. Another one would be online learning mode through the learning management system or simply known as LMS. And the last one is modular learning mode. For the fees, from what you have encountered during registration period, you are required to pay 30% of the total assessment as your down payment. Your balance can be staggered or at the end of the semester. Non-payment means non-acceptance in the following semester that you are going to enroll. For the admission, you are asked to fill up the registration form. Submit honorable dismissal and transcript of records for evaluation purposes. Because we require graduates of baccalaureate degree in education, major in science and math, for master of science teaching, general science, and mathematics respectively. Or those who have taught the subjects for at least three years already is also qualified. Now in the case of non-education, or allied field, 18 units of basic education courses is required. However, if this is not fulfilled, concurrent enrollment of education courses can be considered, but degree will not be granted until such requirement is fulfilled. Now for MAED, 
um, either both teaching English or educational management, a baccalaureate degree in education or its equivalent is needed. Now, in the case you lack some of the requirements, you will be under provisional status and allowed to comply the deficiencies within the semester. The registrar will recertify upon receipt of the needed documents then. For your coursework plan, as you have seen in your individual prospectus for your respective program, the Master of Science teaching has 15 units for the foundation, 18 for the major that includes the cognate, and six for the thesis. While for the Master of Education, both for teaching English and educational management, you have 12 for the core courses, 21 for the major, Cognate is already included there, and six also for the thesis. Both programs have a total of 39 units all in all. For the academic load, student, students are allowed to enroll a maximum of 12 units for regular semester and nine units during mid-year or the summer term. In case you want to take subjects from other SUCs or private universities, you have to ask permission from the registrar or the office of the director, and this will only be allowed if the subjects are not offered in DOS CSD. In case you have taken the subjects from other universities and wish to have it credited, you may apply for transfer credits or advanced credits provided it is taken within the last of five years and it has the same description or coverage. Only a maximum of 50% can be allowed for advanced credit and 25% of that 50% must be from the foundation course and courses rather, and the 25% must be from the major courses. For our grading system, Numerical values of 1, 1.25, 1.5, etc., with their corresponding remarks, such as excellent, very good, good, satisfactory, and passing for the grade of 3. Now, in this time of pandemic, if passing grade is not obtained by the student, a WIP, which means work in progress, will be given instead of 4, 5, or INC. The students has one year to comply, otherwise authorized or AW, which means authorized withdrawal, shall replace the WIP and has to enroll the subject in the following semester. For the residence requirement, this is the number of years allowed to comply the program, maximum number of years allowed to comply the program. And in our case, we only have seven years to complete it. Now, reckoning starts in the state of the student's first admission to a program. Counting continues while he is pursuing the same program. When the student shifts to another program, the counting of his residency restarts thereon, excluding the number of years spent in this previous programs. In case, or in cases rather, where a student has reached the maximum number of years of his residency, he shall take six units of refresher courses. And the refresher courses must be covered in the comprehensive examination. In case there is a need to stop pursuing your MS studies for a period of time, you are allowed to file a leave of absence and it is not counted for your residency. Clearance, however, must be presented upon filing. Now for the admission to candidacy for graduation, a student can be a candidate for graduation if he or she satisfies the following, and that includes completing all the academic courses or requirements must pass the comprehensive exam, and lastly, the thesis requirement of the program. Now, how to take the comprehensive exam? Once the student has complete, completed all the academic requirements, he or she can apply for the compre exam. Evaluation will be conducted by the registrar through the graduate school office. Qualified applicants will be notified after 15 days and required to pay the 
compre exam fee. OR will be presented prior to the scheduled date of examination. Now, there will be two areas, all core courses, and the other one would be for the major courses, and it will be taken for two consecutive Saturdays from 8 to 5 p.m. Now, comprehensive exam is done twice a year. The schedule is every July and December for the first and second semester, respectively. An average of 70% for all areas is required to pass the compre exam, and the result will be released two weeks after. Now, in case of failure, the students can retake the exam in the next schedule time and pay again the examination fee. In case of failure in the re exam, refresher course will be given and the, and given only for the subjects which the examinee failed and must obtain a grade of two or better. Only then that the student can enroll the thesis and given a certificate of completion. Now, after passing the comprehensive examination, the student will be advised to enroll to the master's thesis. The thesis instructor will give the will give guidance on the thesis protocol. This will include acquainting them of the composition of the thesis advisory committee, or simply known as TAC. And this includes the advisor, the chair, and two panel members in, which, in whom or in which one of them is a statistician. Now for Choosing the advisor, the student is given the prerogative to choose his advisor. With the guidance of the advisor, student chooses the thesis advisory committee or the TAC. Now, please take note that the thesis advisor must be a regular faculty of the graduate school. The chair and the two members may not necessarily be. Now, in the case there is a need to change the composition of the panel, the student may do so. This will only be allowed due to the following reasons. One is for the change of topic, disability or prolonged leave of absence by any panel member, strained working relationship between panel members or between the advisor and the students. The changes has to be communicated officially and must be approved by the graduate school coordinator. Now, in preparing for the thesis manuscript, the student is entitled tutorial sessions and may consult a statistician and grammarian but will shoulder the payment for such. The paper must be in accordance with the grad school prescribed format and style, which will be given by the thesis instructor. You may ask what topic should we pick or should you pick or choose? This depends on your interest and in line with the program the student or you are trying to seek. Now the thesis will be enrolled for two regular semesters. One semester for the proposal stage which we will still have to defend it and with the TAC approval the student can formally conduct and work Sorry for that. And work on his thesis for the second semester until its final defense and thesis hardbound submission. In case the student failed to finish the final defense, she can enroll for residency until the student complete the thesis work for a maximum of five years only. Now, once the study is completed, the student will present it through thesis defense. Thesis defense is an oral examination within the DOSCST premises and is open to the public. The requirements include the accomplished thesis defense form duly signed by the TAP and official receipt of the payment for the defense. Please take note that the TAP members should be present during the defense schedule. If all of the revisions as suggested by the thesis advisory committee and the thesis instructor for the format style are done and approved. 
the student is now given an approval for thesis binding. Five copies are required in which copy must be submitted to the grad school before graduation. Furthermore, a copy of the paper shall be submitted to the grad school, an e-copy rather, of the paper shall be submitted to the grad school office. Now, after all the hard work and sleepless nights, just to comply all the requirements of the program, you will soon reap the harvest, and that is to march on your graduation day, which is subject to the approval of the BOT as recommended by the Academic Council. Congratulations and thank you for choosing the Graduate School of Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology. Daghang salam. Salamat, Ma'am Jan. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the Director for Instruction, Dr. Maria Cecilia L. Katubi, for her closing remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. This year's graduate school orientation is quite different or unlike the previous year's orientation, as this year it is done virtual and there were no more introduction of all graduate faculty. Instead, what was presented and was given emphasis and importance was a presentation of the college policies and the use of the learning management system or the LMS, which is now used as a platform for e-learning. I am certain that all of you will agree with me that we have had a very fruitful sharing of information and that everyone was enlightened and was kept abreast and perhaps you learned the answers to some of your questions. I hope that in the coming days, no one will make an excuse and say that you did not know some of the academic policies because even if there are some faculty or students who are not able to watch this orientation, that doesn't mean that they can no longer rewatch this presentation. I therefore enjoined all graduate students who are with us this afternoon to inform other graduate students who missed this orientation program and show them how they may be able to access the same. On behalf of the DOSCST officials and graduate school faculty, I would like to express my appreciation to everyone who are with us this afternoon for taking their time and making this activity a priority. I would like to close my remarks and usher everyone officially to the first semester of academic year 2020-2021. Again, good day. Thank you so much, Dr. Katubig. And that ends our program. If you have questions or clarifications about the graduate school matters, please do not hesitate to comment or write them at the Graduate School Facebook page. Daghang salamat sa inyong tanan. Daghang kayong salamat sa pagpaminaw. God bless us all and have a wonderful school year with DOSCST. Glory to Davao Oriental State, College of Science and Technology. With pride and honor, wave its banner, race up to the sky. We'll pledge our loyalty and dignity to be its crown. Strive to live up with the standard of a true. Glory to Davao Oriental State, College of Science and Technology. Bearing the seal that lead us all to prosperity Hail and praise, singing our alma mater dear Ever with faith in thee, we'll never cease to see D-O-S-C-S-T, our beloved With love, our hopes and faith abide with To thee, steady steps and steadfast minds our aims defined with noble spirit, bright that shine to promote love, peace, and unity. Stream 
my wisdom, knowledge to help humanity, be more homage to our alma mater, dear. Join our voices, say, Mabuhai, where the emblem that seeks for honesty, young and old marching together, march along singing Mabuhai. The O S C S T R belong with love. To be steady steps and steadfast minds our aims define with doubles big and bright that shine to promote love, peace, and unity. Stream of wisdom, knowledge to help humanity, give our homage to our alma mater.